the best of all the warriors ever that the Muslims had the name of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiyallahu anhu he was known as Abu Sulaiman the father of Sulaiman Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira his father was al-Walid ibn al-Mughira al-Makhzumi he had a son known as Khalid he had another known as al-Walid he had another known as Umara and he had another known as Hisham all of these were children of al-Walid al-Walid was a very rich man the father of Khalid very very wealthy and he was a person who used to donate the covering of the Kaaba one year and the whole of Quraysh used to gather to make it the following year. Every year they used to change the cover of the Kaaba. One year Al-Walid used to give it and the other year the whole of Quraysh together used to give it. That's how wealthy he was. And he was known as one of the leaders of Banu Makhzum, the Makhzumi clan. He was one of the leaders. So his sons grew up very wealthy and Khalid was a big man, powerful, muscular person. He was quite fair in complexion and he was very close in looks to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. And as a youngster, he was approximately 20 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he felt that this man is competing with my father. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to talk to him, he used to say, I am more befitting to have been a prophet than you. Who are you and why did Allah reveal to you? You are an orphan. You're a person who has nothing. I am one whom Allah gave so much. I am supposed to have been the prophet. So Allah revealed verses. نحن قسمنا بينهم معيشتهم في الحياة الدنيا ورفعنا بعضهم فوق بعض درجات الله أكبر. Allah speaks about what Al Walid ibn Al Mughira and the others were saying. That why did Allah not send down prophethood to a powerful man from Mecca or from Taif? Why did he have to send prophethood to this man in particular who was an orphan from amongst us? Allah answers them and says, are you the ones who are in charge of distributing the, the gifts of Allah? Are you the ones who are in charge of distributing the mercy of Allah? Allah says we are responsible to give whomsoever we wish and we have raised some above the others in virtue and in goodness and in wealth and in everything else in this world for many reasons in order to be a test for you. May Allah bless us all. So this was a response, but it's a lesson for us. We become jealous when someone does well, well in business. And is competing with Allah. Allah replies you here and he says, why are you jealous? Are you the one who gave or did I give? When someone is knowledgeable and they're doing a lot of good work, we become jealous. If that is the jealousy we have, Allah says, you want to be in his shoes. Well, you need to understand we blessed him. That's exactly what happened with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira lost because he wanted to compete with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when someone has wealth, when they have children, when they have goodness, my brothers and sisters do not become jealous like the kuffar of Quraysh. Do not become jealous like those who want to compete with the gift of Allah because it is Allah's decision to give whom he wants, what he wants, how he wants, when he wants. It's not our decision. So Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira was very angry. So Khalid ibn al-Walid, he looked at his father and he always used to say, I will never adopt what Muhammad has brought because he is competing with my father. He looked at it as competition. Right and wrong has nothing to do with competition. Even if your enemy tells you something that is right, as a Muslim, you adopt it because it is right. And even if your friend tells you something that is wrong, as a Muslim, you reject it because it is wrong. Whether he's your friend or your enemy is something which is completely separate. But what is right and wrong is primary. May Allah bless us and grant us ease. So Khalid ibn Walid was brought up in a powerful home, a strong man. He was very brave and he was a person who was tall, well known in Quraysh as a warrior from a very early age. Now Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us from that type of attitude that he had. He had a son. The son's name was Al-Walid ibn al-Walid, another one. In the battle of Badr, Al-Walid ibn al-Walid was taken captive by the Muslims and they called for a ransom to free him. And they asked for 4,000 dirhams, which was not much actually, but it was a lot in terms of to free a captive. And they said, Al-Walid, this man's father has a lot of money. 
and he has caused a lot of harm against the Muslims. So Khalid ibn al-Walid and Hisham ibn al-Walid, they came to the, where the Muslims were in order to free their brother. And they had paid the ransom and they took their brother away. When they took their brother away, he went to Mecca and after a while, he announced he was a Muslim, Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid. So he was in captivity. He saw the Muslims pray. He saw how they operated, how they respected one another. He saw the beauty in that faith whilst he was captive and he loved it so much. So they asked him, why didn't you accept Islam whilst you were a captive? So Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid says, how could I accept Islam when I was a captive? People might think that my intentions were wrong and I just wanted to be freed. So I waited until my father paid the ransom and I left. Now I'm accepting it as a free man because I want to tell you it is definitely the truth. And he went back to Medina Munawwara and he became one of those who was very close to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one day Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam obviously spoke to him and we will get to that. What did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid regarding his brother Khalid ibn al-Walid. This was the, after the battle of Badr, what had happened? At Uhud, Khalid ibn al-Walid had come and do you know he was on the side of the Kuffar, of the enemy, of the of Quraysh, those who had usurped the wealth of the Muslimin. So Khalid ibn al-Walid, at that time he was not a Muslim. He looked at the archers and he saw that these people have left their positions. So immediately he took a group of men and he went back and swiped the Muslimin by sandwiching them between the enemy. And this is when the Muslims suffered a great loss at the hands of Khalid ibn al-Walid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and may Allah grant us a lesson because the people had not obeyed the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Khalid ibn al-Walid was known as the hero of Uhud from the, from the Qurayshi or from the Qurashi perspective, from the perspective of the Kuffar of Mecca. Now, after that, Khalid ibn al-Walid came for the battle of the trench. You know, the battle of the trench that took place a year and a half later. What he did is he was responsible for executing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was given the task. You need to watch for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and get rid of him. So as he went, he tried here and there, but you know, there was a trench that was dug and he just could not get to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is reported that as he tried to get there by night, Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu an had immediately noticed and alerted everyone and the plan was foiled. So Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu went back to Mecca with those who had lost in the battle. It didn't really take place because obviously the wind had come and I'm sure we would know the battle of the trench, the kuffar was sent back to Mecca miraculously by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu at the time of Hudaybiyah, when the Muslimin had come out without any weapons in order to make Umrah, the pilgrimage in Mecca, the kuffar of Mecca stopped them. They had sent Khalid ibn Walid with 200 men to go and attack the Muslims. But when he went, he saw that they were praying. They were praying and he thought to himself, OK, I've got 200 men. Whilst these people go to their prostration, I will swipe at them. But he was shocked that Muhammad وسلم, when he said Allahu Akbar and everyone went to sujood, half of them went to sajda and the other half stayed up. And then when he said Allahu Akbar, half of them came up and half of them went down. And he was saying, what is this all about? That was Salatul Khawf, specific Salah prescribed at, at a time of war. When Muhammad Sallallahu was given this gift because Allah says that these people had intended for you to all be in prostration at once so they could swipe at you. So some of you go down and some of you stay up. When some come up, some will go down and so on. It's a beautiful salah and it was a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the time Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu in his heart, the first light had entered. He says, that means this man Muhammad, we will never be able to harm him. Impossible. I am a man. I have mastered the military arts completely. I cannot even get close to him for some reason. And so in his heart, he said, this man is going to lead and he's going to be the winner and he's going to be victorious. This is what Khalid tells us later. Radiallahu an. So after Hudaybiyah, he went back and he received a letter from his brother, Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid. And the letter said, Oh, my beloved brother Khalid. I always know you to be a very intelligent person and as intelligent as you are, it cannot escape you that Islam is correct. 
with that mind of yours, you are such a powerful person in intellect. The Prophet has been asking about you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told me, where is Khalid? Where is Khalid? And I told him, Inshallah, Allah will bring him along. He says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, a man like Khalid who is so intelligent, anyone who is absolutely intelligent will know that Islam is correct. If they are unbiased, they will know that what the Muslims are calling to and what they are worshipping is actually correct. They are calling towards worshipping one maker, the maker alone and doing good all your life. And this is what is correct. So Khalid ibn al-Walid read the letter and he was touched by it because now one thing had happened at Hudaybiyah and after Hudaybiyah. This was the second thing. The third thing, he slept that night and he saw a dream. The dream of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu, he says, I saw myself on a piece of land that was dry and very, very narrow. And then I saw that I was traveling to another beautiful green piece of land, which was very broad. And he said, when I got up, I knew it means go to Medina Munawwara and that is Islam and Allah has chosen Islam for you. So he decided to speak to his friends. Who were his friends? Now it was quite tricky to talk to them because they all hated Islam. The first one, he had a friend, and this friend was quite close to him, Safwan ibn Umayyah. He tells Safwan, oh Safwan, what do you think of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I've tried so much, the man, you cannot get close to him. I believe he's going to win one day and he's going to overtake everyone, the Arabs and the non-Arabs. And I think it's about time we went. So Safwan says, no ways, never. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? That is because Safwan ibn Umayyah had lost his father and brother. And so he decided, okay, he told Safwan, okay, forget what I said. It's okay. Just forget about it. And he went to Ikrimah, the son of Abu Jahl and told him exactly the same thing. And Ikrimah responded in the same way. The son of Abu Jahl, he says, no ways. Are you crazy? He says, okay, forget about it. Then he went to a third friend of his by the name of Uthman ibn Abi Talha. Uthman ibn Abi Talha, there are two or three different names. Perhaps they are referring to the same person or one may be referring to the nephew and one may be referring to the uncle because Uthman ibn Talha is one man and Uthman ibn Talha ibn Abi Talha may be the same man or may be the nephew. But whoever it was, this was Uthman ibn Talha, a friend of Khalid ibn al-Walid. So when Khalid told him, ibn al-Walid, that let's do this, let's go to Medina. I'm really feeling to go because of these reasons. He said, okay, I'm coming with you. Let's go. Subhanallah. Amazing. So quietly, the two of them prepared everything and they decided to do hijrah without anyone knowing. They went and on the way, as they're going, they saw one of the powerful men of Quraysh by the name of Amr ibn al-As, the man who later conquered Egypt. Amr ibn al-As, he was one of those who went to Najashi, if you recall, on behalf of Quraysh. And he was speaking about Jafar ibn Abi Talib. That was a man, inshallah, we'll talk about him in a few days time. But Khalid ibn al-Walid, and this man, Uthman ibn Talha, they met him and they asked him, Oh, Amr, where are you going? Or oh, he asked them, where are you guys going? So they said, no, we want to know from you. So Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu was brave enough. He said, you know what? We are going to accept Islam and we're going to Medina. He said, guess what? I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Subhanallah. They arrived in Al-Medina Al-Munawwara. The leaders of Quraysh, their children now are here. And they came and as they were entering Medina, Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid sees his brother and rushes to him. He says, Wallahi, the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already informed us that you are on your way. Imagine a miracle of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already informed his companions that Khalid ibn Al-Walid is on his way to come here. Subhanallah. He says, amazingly, let's go. The messenger is waiting for you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the three of them walk into the presence of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the greeting itself spoke a mountain. He says, Assalamu Alaika Ya Rasulallah. May peace be upon you, O messenger of Allah. This was Khalid ibn Al-Walid, the man whom they all wanted to kill in Uhud because of how many Muslims he killed. And yet Khalid ibn al-Walid greets him as Rasulullah and Amr ibn al-As and Uthman ibn Talha and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, look, this is Quraysh. It has brought to you its liver, meaning it has now thrown out to you the most important part of its organs. Amazing. And so Khalid ibn al-Walid says, I declared the Shahada in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but there was a problem that I had in my heart. What was it? 
I felt that I killed so many Muslims and now look at what's going on. I caused so much harm against Islam. So he said, I looked at Muhammad وسلم, and I said, Oh messenger, please pray for me. I have caused so much harm against the Muslim. What will happen to me? May Allah forgive me. That is when Muhammad says, Ya Khalid, inna al-Islam ma yajubbu ma qabla. Oh Khalid, I want to inform you that Islam deletes the sins that were committed prior to it. So it doesn't delete all your deeds. It only deletes your sins. Remember this. You don't start with a new leaf. You start with a leaf that only has good on it. Amazing. If you did good before you accepted Islam, it will come through even after you accepted Islam. But if you have done bad, that is what is wiped out. Just like my brothers and sisters, Tawbah does exactly the same thing. It wipes out the bad and it leaves the good. May Allah grant us repentance because repentance does exactly the same thing. Tawbah the meaning of which is repentance and turning to Allah. So this was Khalid ibn al-Walid. He heard the statement once, it was not enough. He heard it twice, it was not enough. He heard it a third time. Then he says, oh messenger, I pledge my allegiance to you. There it is, here you are. I am Khalid ibn al-Walid and I've come to you. Here we are, subhanAllah. So the Prophet ﷺ made a dua for him. He says, oh messenger, for every harm that I've caused Islam, pray for me. The Prophet ﷺ says, oh Allah, forgive Khalid for everything that he has done against Islam. Subhanallah. This was the acceptance of Islam of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an. He took part in the battle of Mu'ta immediately after that. And remember, we spoke about how there were three leaders appointed by Muhammad ﷺ, Zayd ibn Haritha, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, and Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu anhum and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said they will lead one after the other. All three of them lost their lives. Then Thabit ibn Arqam went and took the flag, the flag of leadership. And he gave it to Khalid ibn al-Walid. And Khalid ibn al-Walid was a new Muslim. And he said, no ways, I'm not going to take this. You have actually taken part in Badr, O Thabit ibn Arqam. I am not from amongst those. You'd rather carry it. So Thabit ibn Arqam looks at the rest of the companions on that day of Mu'tah. And he says, do you agree that Khalid is the warrior from amongst us who knows best how to tackle the enemy and he shall lead us? And they all agree. So that is when Khalid took it and the battle changed its course and they came back to Medina, subhanAllah, having achieved quite a bit in Mu'ta. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all goodness and grant us too a lot of goodness. So this was the man, Khalid ibn al-Walid. Every single army he was in, he won his battle. Without exception, subhanAllah. So much so that today, the military schools of the West, they study the life of Khalid ibn al-Walid. There are so many movies that you will find that are after Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu and his life that are studied very carefully by military schools of the non-Muslims and the Muslims across the globe. He was an intelligent man, extremely intelligent Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. So at the time of the victory of Makkah, he was the only man who was the newest in accepting Islam, who was put as one of the leaders of the army of the Muslimin. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was there himself. Abu Ubaid Amir ibn al-Jarrah was put in the front. Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam was to the right side. And guess who was on the left? Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, a child of Quraysh who had just come. He was going back to Quraysh as victorious. And he had told those youngsters already that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is going to win. He's going to overtake and he's going to rule everywhere here. He used to tell them at that stage that, you know what? It is an honor for us to accept Muhammad. He's a part of Quraysh. Why are we jealous of him? He's one of us. What a powerful statement. I think we can learn from that. Sometimes we harass the children of our own community, not realizing that if they are a part of our community, by us harassing them, we are actually doing our own community a disservice. Rather, we are proud of the achievements of our country, our community and the Ummah at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand what was the statement of Khalid ibn al-Walid. Anyway, he took part in so many battles that people began to say Khalid is the warrior. Khalid is the man. Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu came in and said, I don't like the way people are now thinking that Khalid is the big magician who wins all the wars. So, oh Abu Ubaidah, I write, he wrote him a letter and said, Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah, go and tell Khalid that he must come back to Medina. No more taking part in the war as a leader. He's just a normal Muslim and you go and overtake. 
So Abu Ubaid Amr ibn al-Jarrah, if you recall a few days ago, we said he took the letter to Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an, and he gave the letter after the war was over. Khalid ibn al-Walid immediately said, no problem, I'm going back to Medina Munawwara. So Umar ibn al-Khattab said, I did not remove Khalid because I had a problem with him, but I removed it, him because people started believing that it is him and we believe it is Allah. So this is why there were others who were placed in the place of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu at one stage. And this is Khalid ibn al-Walid on his deathbed four years later, just four years after Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu had removed him, he was on his deathbed. And he says, Wallahi, there is not a single spot on my body, not a single spot on my body that does not have some form of wound on it. My entire body has wounds all over my face, my head and my entire body. And yet I am dying on a bed and not on the battlefield. So those who are cowards must learn a lesson from me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he has written death for you, you will die no matter where it is. I took part in so many of the battles, but Allah decided you will die in the way that the camel dies. These are his words. Then he says, subhanallah, Khalid ibn al-Walid was known as Saifullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was sitting in Medina during the Battle of Mu'tah, we made mention of it the other day when we said that he's, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the knowledge of the unseen on that day to be able to see that the Khalid ibn al-Walid has now taken over the leadership of the army in Mu'tah. And he says, أَخَذَهُ سَيْفٌ مِّن سُيُوفِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He says, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a sword from amongst the swords of Allah has taken over the reins of the Muslims. So imagine if Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu was killed in the battlefield, people would say the sword of Allah is broken. So Allah's choice was that he must not be killed in the battlefield. He was on his bed. He died a natural, normal death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. This was Khalid ibn al-Walid. He passed away in Hims and he is buried in Hims, which is in Syria. May Allah grant us peace in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in all the countries, in Gaza and in everywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace and goodness. My brothers and sisters, I end with something important. Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu on his deathbed made the most famous statement that we know about him. He says, شَغَلَنِ الْجِهَادُ عَن تَعَلُّمِ كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ القرآن. He says, I was busy in the battlefield. I was unable to learn much about the Quran. Subhanallah. But I have no regrets. Allah has chosen me to fulfill a part of Islam. I have to stop there. It is the most important lesson we learn. Not every one of us will be masters in the Quran. Not every one of us will be professionals in Islamic knowledge. We have from amongst us doctors, accountants. We have men of different disciplines and women whom we need in our society and, the co and community. We do not underestimate the value of one another. We should never think I'm the only Muslim who's serving Islam. No matter who you are and what you have, you may serve Islam either through your profession, through your wealth, through your knowledge, or through a combination of more than one of those things. Do not ever think that the work you are doing is the only work of Allah or his messenger, because that would be an insult to Allah, having brought down the spectrum of Islam to one job that you are doing. No ways. There are 100,000 ways you can serve Islam. If you think there's only one way, you have insulted the other 99.999,000 different ways of supporting Islam. May Allah grant us ease and help us to love one another, to understand how much we need one another. Brothers and sisters, this love that we should be feeling for one another is such that really we should have a smile on our faces when we see each other. May Allah grant us unity and goodness. May he help us develop our hearts and feelings towards one another. May he help us appreciate the different works of the different people who are serving Islam in totally different ways. And may we be never be people who think that we are the only ones who are serving Islam. May Allah safeguard all of us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.